so we planned, shot and edited this music video for artist Joe Parsons at a really difficult time. We were in the middle of the UK's coronavirus lockdown at this point, so me travelling to London, renting a studio, having even a small crew, were all out of the question. But we wanted to put together something a little more abstract, and we felt like this was something we could achieve long distance, as long as our ideas were communicated clearly and we could be resourceful enough to produce something on next to no budget. So we had our initial discussions about the track, its themes and ideas, and how we could translate these into visuals. We already knew we were going to go for something abstract, glitchy, and maybe even colourful, as this was fitting to Joe's ideas in the song, and a lot of this could be done in the edit. Keeping things more abstract would also help us to mitigate any quality issues with whatever camera we ended up using. We essentially planned with a cheap, less capable camera in mind, which could have even been a phone camera, so we could make that lack of quality part of the idea for the video. At the time, small social bubbles for friends were allowed, and Joe happens to be close friends with an assistant camera operator, James, so we thought it would be a good idea to have James help us shoot the video for us. This would alleviate any extra stress or complications that would come with Joe, not being a professional camera operator himself, having to film himself, change settings, nail focus, etc. We could also have them comfortably shoot the video in Joe's flat. We decided that we keep the actual shoot pretty simple. Multiple still angles of Joe stood topless, singing the vocals against a dark backdrop. This would allow us to simplify any lighting we needed and keep it constant throughout the shoot. I set up some lighting examples for Joe that he'd be able to replicate using whatever lighting he had available. And it turns out he owned a ring light, and these give out a pretty nice quality of light already. I wanted the light to be a little softer, which was just a simple case of getting Joe to hang a bedsheet over it, to diffuse it a bit more. To get the black background, Joe bought some lengths of cheap black tablecloth. We just need to black out any window light coming in from outside his flat, and position our ring light in a way to minimise spill onto the background. However, Joe didn't have any more material to black out his windows, so the simplest solution to this was to shoot at night time, when there would be no extra light coming into the room. We knew our cameraman James had a Sony A7 II and a 24 to 105 mm f/4 lens, so I did some research into quality and picture profile settings of the camera. I knew that our ring light wouldn't be particularly powerful and we'd probably be needing to shoot at a relatively high ISO and push and pull our image around to get a suitable look. After Joe had done some lighting tests on a cheaper camera and sent them over, I roughly graded them out and was happy with how the shots were generally going to look. Now we just needed a plan for him and James to follow on the day of the shoot, so I wrote out a short overview and shot list for them to work with. This included focal lengths, little screen grabs of our test shots to demonstrate framing, and a little description of what each shot should be. While we had our planned abstract overlays adding energy and interest to the video, I thought it would be a good idea to get some movement from Joe in there also, with some spinning or swaying motions, which would be shot in slow motion along with the vocals, and as well as adding interest, this would also add another layer to the ideas behind the track. As we wanted slow motion for the video, we needed to shoot everything in 50 frames per second and slow down to 25 frames per second in post. To make sure the vocals synced up correctly, it was just a case of playing the track back at double speed and having Joe sing at that speed so that our lip sync would be correct for the slow motion. With everything planned out, we had a brief video call just before the guys started shooting just to make sure everything was prepared, lighting was looking okay, and to double check camera settings. After this, I left them to follow the plan and shot list that I'd written out, 
If there were any issues during shooting, we could just message or call. After everything had been shot, all the files were sent over and I could start on the edit. The plan here was to start the track quite minimal, then to start splashing these shaped, colourful, glitchy overlays onto our footage, some of which also contained some lyrics to the track, which Joe had sent over to me to use. From here, we'd slowly build the intensity of the visuals to go with the build-up in the song, ending in a sort of euphoric, glitchy, noisy, abstract collage, which would then slowly fade back into a minimal style to bookend the video. I started the edit by syncing all the clips to the track. We had 18 clips in total, and as the clips had been slowed down, we weren't using any auto-sync options, so this was done manually. After everything was synced up, I started building the edit, starting slow, then adding in some of our overlays and glitchy edits. I played around with different crops and composite modes for the overlays, mainly using difference and multiply just to get a different look between some of the overlays, adding to our glitchy style. Joe wanted the effect of almost like a faulty light bulb turning on at the start of the video and off at the end. It's easy to do little effects like this in Resolve. We just grabbed an adjustment clip from the effects toolbox on the edit page and overlaid it over the start of our first clip. Then it was just a case of going into the open effects menu and dragging the desired effect into the adjustment clip. We used flicker edition for the flickering light. We could then adjust the parameters of the effect up in the inspector. For the end of the video, the effect was achieved exactly the same way. We actually peppered a few of these adjustment clips throughout the video, but with an added camera shake effect applied on top of the flicker. Anytime we wanted this effect, it was just a case of copy and pasting the adjustment clip where we needed it, and tweaking the parameters of each effect in the inspector to make sure each one was slightly different from the last. This made for some more interesting transitions across the video. So as the track and video starts building up toward the last quarter, we added in this overlay of passing under these trees and branches, fading into the shot, which carries on through the next section. The clip itself was actually shot out of a car window from a passenger seat driving through a wooded area, using the Ronin-S and the Blackmagic Micro Cinema Camera. We also implemented overlays of small flames in the next section. These were actually just the flames on a gas cooker, shot with a macro lens with some camera movement. I cropped even further into these shots in the edit, and combined with everything else that was going on, we got a lot of noise here. But me and Joe were happy to keep this in, as we wanted this section of the song to feel maybe even a little overwhelming, with all of the overlays and colours going on at once, and it worked nicely. Overall, I think this was a great exercise for me personally, in seeing what can be achieved creatively with minimal resources and multiple limitations especially at such a strange, restricted time. I'm hoping that this video sparks some ideas and helps out in some way for anyone facing similar restrictions, or just a way of thinking about working within limitations in general. I'll put the link to the full video in the description and comments. Definitely go and check it out, it's a great track. If you're interested in how I colour grade my work, I've just added a 21 minute tutorial video to my website for just £8. The tutorial takes you through the grading process in DaVinci Resolve for two cinematic looks. A more modern, punchy look, and a more classical, filmic look. I've also included some practice DNG files so you can grade along with the video. Head over to 
robellisscinematography.com forward slash downloads to grab the video.